everyone. This week's episode, we'll see us saying goodbye to Adam and Lily, and we then decide to sail up Loch Sunot and do some exploring, go to several different spots. Uh, from there, we sail round Ardner Merchant Point. It was an interesting sail, but it was extremely foggy, so there uh, is some coverage of that. So, although you don't get to see much on the headland, you do get to see how we sail in fog. And we end up in Malague as our furthest north destination. When we get to Malague, we discover we've got a problem with our sail drive, and you can find out what that is when you watch the episode. Enjoy! Well, this morning we've had to say a sad goodbye to Adam and Lily. They've gone. Um, they've gone back to home. We are currently on a mooring boy in Tobermory. We are going to sail this afternoon out of here through this gap. There's a lot of nasty rocks just there. We're going up Loch, I think we're called Sun Art. So we've got a bit of tricky navigation to do around these bits, but it's quite wide, I think. Up here, when it goes off the chart, rejoins it over here. And we're going to this town called Salem. I think Alan's booked us a mooring boy. The weather is currently really beautiful outside. Alan is cooking lunch. Mm. What have we got for lunch? It's interesting that you say really beautiful and focus on me. I think that's really encouraging. <laughs> uh, we've got burgers. We've got home, uh, not home, Tober Mori made burgers and uh, some nice mulled cheese to go with it. Very I'm nice. Excited. And here's the weather outside today. So hot. I'm thinking we might need the bimini up for the first time in Scotland. I'm in shorts and I'm really too hot, which is amazing, but perhaps when we're sailing we won't need it. So that's where we're heading, out there and up Loch Sunart and saying goodbye to Tobermory. Hopefully then after that we'll head further north. Well, we've just left Tobermory, hopefully for the last time for a little while. We're hoping that uh, in the next few days. The weather's going to be quite settled and we should be able to head further north. But for tonight we're heading up Loch Sunart and we're going to go on a boy I think. But this is us leaving. Goodbye Tobermory. We have enjoyed you. Um, touching wood. <laughs> yeah. Alan says he's touching wood. That's why he's tapping his head. <laughs> Let's hope that it is good weather. We'll tie our heather to the front to go around Ardner Merchant Point and all will be good. This is a, a little rock called Isla Rizgen, something like that. Again, apologies if I'm destroying the language. Absolutely uh, beautiful. You're coming up Loch, Loch Sunnet, and then you do a sort of dog leg to get around this, this little rock. Wind's directly behind us, so we're, we're sort of goose winging at the moment. But it does tend to cause the mane to swing around a little bit. And Tisha is... Uh, Fast there. On the helm, having fun. <laughs> Do you want to talk to me about this island? No, we're not talking about that island. <laughs> All right. It's not my fault, but like the mainland. <laughs> okay, I'll say no more. We're on course, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, the sail up Loch Sunar is absolutely stunning. A bit tricky, the wind is all over. We've got full sails up. There's a lot of land and Alan looking not too stressed, so that's a good thing, especially since my navigation skills seem to have gone right out the window today. Two glasses of it, no doubt about it, two glasses. There they are, porpoises, two of them, just about surfacing. Is that we're going to get? Oh, there they go. We're making our way really well up this lock. We've seen lots of hard bobses, which is fun. And um, we're just making fabulous progress, really. A stunning place to be. It's 
beautiful today. The sun is shining. You can see us swooshing at the bow. And we're nearly there. We can put our feet up, relax, have dinner, and just enjoy this beautiful setting. Well, we are just arriving in Salem. Um, we've come up Loch Sunar, as you know, and this is what we can see. It's a very tiny harbour. There are some pontoons and there's some mooring boys. But it's looking good. I think we're going to get a good night. So this is Tish working studiously to not do the washing up. She's climbed into a locker to hide. He lies! There's no <laughs> washing up and the drying up and he puts me in a locker. It's because you talk too much. Now just put your head down because I'm closing the lid. <laughs> We've heard a rattle from under the wheel, so uh, so Tish has, has climbed into the locker to investigate. She, exactly. We think it might be the auto helm, but uh, we need to check. So that's what we're up to now. The joy of sailing. Well, this is the dodgy part. Let me have a look. This, I think, it's a bit loose. Here we are in Loch Sunnet, in uh, uh, sorry, Salem in Loch Sunnet, a uh, beautiful little mooring. That's the actual lock making its way up there. There's still another two hours sailing up the lock if we want to, and then spinning round, got the pontoons. And I guess that's the town of Salem over there. And there's Tish picking up some internet beans. Today's plan is we, we've left Salem and uh, we're making our way down Loch Sooner back towards Ard Ardna Merchant Point. Uh, we're going to pick up an anchorage, probably an anchorage for lunch, and then, uh, and then make our way to another anchorage which will give us a bit more shelter for overnight. Um, it's a really nice navigation lock soon. It's absolutely amazing to look around. The, um, the scenery is, is it's always breathtaking, I know, but you know, it, it, it's incredible when you think how deep these locks are and, and how lush and green the, the hillsides are. Remarkable. When we sailed in here yesterday, I was convinced. I'm well, not convinced but thought that we had to come through this gap here. Because when I looked the other way, everything was landlocked. And I could not understand which way to go. Alan has since laughed his socks off. We have to go in this way. We have to go around a little island. We won't be making any fuss over that today. Here we are on our lunchtime anchorage stop. Alan's doing a little spot of fish in there. We've seen lots of mackerel jumping. I don't suspect we'll get any, but you can live in hope. It's a gorgeous spot. We're quite close to the islands. This is a little island on this side. That's Kana, which is the big one in the background. And then if we come all the way around from this side, that bit of land over there is another island. Oren say might have to try and do a bit of bagging. Here's Tisha, very close to this little island, what's this island called? Is it? Is this? Oh, it's, it's a very small island. And uh, we are remarkably close, but we're still in five and a half metres of water. So we've dropped the anchor and, uh, and here we are, having fun, trying to catch mackerel and failing. She's decided she wants to bag this island. So here she goes. She's got some soup with her. I think she's concerned about how to step out because it looks quite rocky. It's obviously very steep too. There she goes. A small step for man, a giant leap for island bagging kind. Don't forget your soup. Oh, don't forget your phone. And then of course the soup, which is the all important hot beverage. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> she goes. Don't fall in. 
she's got it all. She's got the phone, she's got a soup, and she's holding on to the tender. And the moment of truth. Yeah, there she goes. Hot beverage consumed, and that's the island bagged. We just need to learn how to pronounce it now. We're just looking for the entrance now to Drumbuie, Drumbuie Lock. It's not really clear where it is. We think we're on. We think we're heading for it, but at the moment it hasn't revealed itself. So it must be a pretty squeaky entrance. Well, we're coming into Lock Drumbuie. Very little entrance. Not very big at all. There it is. There's a lot of beeping. That's just our helm. It's telling us where to go. How's it going, Smith? All right. It's, uh, it's, it's a lovely entrance. It's a bit, it's a bit squeaky. but It's, it's a bit uh, skinny in place, isn't it? Yeah, there's a big rock somewhere down there, which is out of sight, underwater. Well, in that case, I'll get off this camera and make sure we don't hit it. Well, we made it through that little entrance there and we didn't hit the underwater rock. Yippee! Here's our anchorage for the night in Loch Drumbury. It's quite busy. Lots of boats have come in. Lovely and calm. This is Loch Drumbury at um, five o'clock in the morning. Absolutely mill pond calm. Beautifully sheltered anchorage. Uh, we're just getting ready to uh, set off to take most of the tide up to um, my lake. We're going to be going around at the Merchant Point. So let's see how the weather holds. Well, we're up and we're off. It's very early, it's just before six, but we're heading into a bit of a pea super fog. I think we're going to be busy this morning. Hopefully, it'll burn off quite quickly. Well, we're making our way towards Arthur Merchant Point. A fog has descended, and the normal dramatic countryside that we can see has completely been obliterated. There is, I would say, less than about 20 metres visibility. Um, there's our tish. But that's it, no, no land in sight. We're normally very close to the land, but the fog is that dense. We can't see a flipping thing. Foghorn's out and uh, radar's on. So keep you posted. I know he loves me when I'm on watch in the fog in a pea super and I can't see a thing and he brings me a lovely sausage and egg sandwich. Awesome. Well, we spent the first three hours this morning doing just this. Keeping a lookout. You can see how foggy it still is. It's not improved much. Often it burns off quite quickly. But not today. Oh, well, making good enough progress, so we're happy. Well, we've been out three and a half hours and finally we can see some land. Hopefully you can just see the edge of the Isle of Egg behind me. We're so excited because we've seen nothing all morning. And finally the sun is burning that fog off. Um, we can also see some stuff up the headland as well, so maybe we'll get some interesting shots of what we can see in maybe an hour or so. It might have burnt it all off, but it looks amazing what's peeking through already. We've got a very dramatic view now. This is the Isle of Egg in front of us. And I think in, in the background, that is rum. Um, and you can see a bank of fog between the two, I think, just in between the hills. There's still quite a lot of fog in that bit. And then it clears, but we can sort of see sky in the distance and all of the sort of headland now. The sun's come out, beautiful morning. Enjoying the view. Even though I'm enjoying the view, I think with a really calm water, often you see sort of dolphins or whales or, or things in the water are really much easier to spot, porpoises, that sort of thing, basking sharks. And I thought this morning with that sort of eerie fog that we went through, we might spot something. We have seen nothing today, even though it's so calm. It's, uh, it's been a strange morning, really. And I know that sailing in fog, a lot of people are 
are worried about that and, and find it quite scary. I would say that for us, yes, we feel a bit more tense than normal, um, but we've got our radar and we've got our AIS system, which allows us to identify other big ships, where they're going and whether we're on collision course. So having that really helps you to see what you can't see. So it makes passages possible, I suppose, and a little less stressful. We did both sit on deck and keep watch and we also carry a foghorn just in case we think people can't see us so we can alert them to our position. So all in all it's been a good passage. We've we've come round and a couple more hours we should be in Malague and we really are planning to do quite a few chores when we get there. I think the boat needs a good wash, we need to clean it inside and out. We're going to do a stack of washing. Um, Hopefully, I'd really like to try and get my second COVID jab, but it's proving quite difficult. Uh, and really to get ready for being a little bit further north where there are very few marinas and places for us to stop off and get things like fuel. So we need to get the fuel tanks topped up. But looking forward to maybe a few weeks around, maybe a bit more anchoring and possibly seeing some more friends who keep a cottage up here in Ollapool. So it would be really great if we get the chance to meet them. We are never promised anywhere because we really don't know what the weather's going to do, but it's been really quite nice for the past week or so. So let's hope it lasts. Uh, May was not the good weather that Scotland normally has, so maybe June's going to be it for us. We're about seven miles from Malague now, so Tish is just having a moment on the deck. I think she might be doing a bit of um, interneting because we've we've managed to somehow get some 4G while we're making our way up to um, to Malague. Can't wait to get in. Oh we've made it this is our berth in Malague. Come past a, a big clipper there. There's a big sort of ferry port here going over to the Isle of Skye and rum and egg and places like that. It's a tiny little marina. You can see some fishing boats on the hard but nice day going to have some lunch and then it's on with the boat jobs. Here we are. I've got my head in the uh, engine bay again today because um, we heard a, a strange vibration coming from either the propeller or the gearbox as we made our way up from Arden uh, Merchant Point yesterday. Uh, and so I checked the um, gearbox oil. It's a Volvo S120 cell drive and it's emulsion. So that tells me that um, water's got into it and I therefore need to change the seals. Unfortunately, to change the seals, I've got to get the boat lifted out. Uh, they don't have a, a lifting facility in um, Malague, so we've got to make our way either to uh, Armadale, which is across on the Isle of Skye, or to um, uh, Arisaig, which is about seven miles down the coast. Um, but both of them need spring tides for us to get in so we're going to be at least five days six days before we can leave here uh, in order to get in so these guys arrived in the middle of the night just briefly woke us not for long though um, apparently they're really hard to get in row into a berth but uh, they come from, over from rom but the boat has come up from essex with these guys on it they're rowing it round and just before that it came across the atlantic I cannot believe a boat like that come across the Atlantic. I think that would be really scary. <laughs>